All right. So um, it was, it's been interesting listening to Lisa and to Suzanne. Um, I did my uh, graduate thesis on um, success, succession planning in an organization, and I did it by actually um, linking it to a new strategic plan and identifying competencies for leadership, and I did all that rigorous behavioral-based language. And so then when <laughs> Doreen said to me, we want you to talk about succession planning and project management, my first response, my first thing was this. Succession planning and project management. They don't go together. <laughs> um, so I, um, I had previously spoken to Lisa because she was speaking about talent management at a project um, management um, organization. And I had given her all of my pin box, and then there's a guide to a pin box. Has anybody ever seen a pin box? It's the, the, print, the body of knowledge for project management. And, um, and, and as an OD person, it's, it's quite an interesting struggle for me. So let's just start with what project management is. Um, project management is really just a methodology for running a project from start to finish. And so under the PMBOK um, body of knowledge and uh, the Project Management Institute, what it really is is it's a bunch of practices and policies and you know, uh, procedures and guidelines and techniques for, for running a project from start to finish. And the thing about a project that's different than most things in an organization, it has a beginning and it has an end. It could be a beginning and end of three months, it could be three years. It, you know, it depends on, on the, the size of the project. So uh, project management human resources is one body of knowledge amongst nine bodies of knowledge. And there are, within the project management body of knowledge, 42 uh, project management processes. When you can imagine, as an organizational development person, how excitingly and thrilling this is for me. Um, <laughs> So succession planning is not in any of those 42 processes. And so that little diagram there is um, all the different things. And, and I have the copy of the PMBOK, and it was so well read, wasn't it, Lisa, when I loaned it to you? Uh, I flagged a couple of things. I go, just start here. Um, and so I teach in uh, the project management uh, program at UBC. I teach uh, team mm -hmm. establishment, I teach HR in a project, and I teach some fundamental communication skills. And I arrived there 12 years ago, and um, they said, we really need you because our project teams, it's a project learning, it's a, a team-based learning environment. They're not getting along, and they really need you. And so they brought me in at module 13. <clears throat> And at module 13, I'm just really just doing like a crisis intervention at the end of a term. And people are saying, why weren't you here earlier? So the next year, they brought me in at module number five, and that was better. And now I'm in on day two. And on day two, I start working with them on, on understanding like the system of being a team and what that means. And so everything in the project management body of knowledge talks about inputs, tools, and techniques, and outputs. And so whenever I look at those things, I just cringe and die because it's a mechanistic, you know, a process for human systems. And it's, I struggle. So I bring out systems diagrams and we talk about, you know, bottoms, middles and tops. And we talk about, you know, your personal experience. And they're looking at this flow chart and they have serious work to do. Um, and so they're like humoring me. And so what's really interesting is um, I'll show you one more thing I want to this is the human resources <laughs> thing, and you can see the most lively part is the middle where it says acquire a team. Um, and that is their talent management. It's, um, you know, <laughs> yeah, it's like you start with, you know, you've got your plan, you've broken out your work pack packets, you start a job description, we hire, we acquire a team. And look at them, they're on it anyway, they're out there on their, uh, doing their activities and scheduling and budgeting. Like they're just, it's a, it's a miracle on paper. Um, <laughs> so that's why they have, you know, real trouble with me. Um, because I make them sit in circles and I make them talk and we do like getting to know you types of things. And they, they first they sort of like, oh, here she is <laughs> again. And we're going to just be nice and we're going to learn how to play. And, <laughs> 
And I got some feedback at this term from, um, we do a, at the end, uh, an entire review of the process. And there was about four students, and they were forwarded to me the evaluations that said, of all the things that they learned in the program, the part that was the most worthwhile to them was the fact that we learned how to be as a team and we functioned as a team. And um, without that, they don't think they could have survived the four months that we kept them sequestered because we really do put them... We kind of do like a Stockholm Syndrome thing and keep them in small <laughs> rooms for four months. So then, out of the blue, from LinkedIn, came an email to me from a, a past student who now is working in Winnipeg, and he said, I've been thinking about you. I'm a project manager here in Winnipeg, and um, every day I use what you taught me. And so then I was like, oh, I have value. <laughs> <laughs> And then I went to the project management planning meeting for the program, and um, we started talking about things. And so while I was at that meeting, I said, I am going to give a talk about um, the um, uh, succession planning and projects, and so I'm going to need uh, some input from you. So I just want to interview a couple of you. And so here's what the first person said. What do you want to talk about this for? I just want to run a project. <laughs> I asked the second person. They said, I don't concern myself with anything to do with HR. I'm a project manager. The third man said, I'm sorry, but that is an organizational issue. <laughs> um, and then I phoned a guy who, mm -hmm. is in, um, who was my real pal in the program, and he's since left. And I said, so the topic is succession planning and project management. He goes, wait a minute, I hear a project in there. Do you mean you want to do a project to create a succession plan? I can do that. <laughs> I said, no, that's not the topic. <laughs> so this is what he said to me. Any good project manager can be immediately replaced by another good project manager. <laughs> and he says, don't quote me on that, <laughs> but I think you could just pull one out and insert another one in. And I thought, of course you do. <laughs> and so then that took me into doing some more research and some more thinking. And really, truthfully, in project management, succession planning is done at a tactical level only. And it's only at the levels of developing a plan, a plan for you know, how you're going to acquire people, uh, you know, identifying the, um, the work that's required, and actually creating a clear job descriptions. Um, and so the clarity in the job description does actually help in more of a transition plan than a succession plan. So we really need that clarity. Um, and it's also done on the, you know, doing good hires. So hiring a team effectively. So they actually, project managers need people who are good at hiring to work with them so that they make better decisions. Um, and the develop a team is the part that I work on <laughs> with them. And when they hear develop a team, they mean you should learn how to wor work Microsoft Project, and they think you should learn how to do these you know, specific skills. And I mean, no, you should learn to talk to each other, you should learn to have crisis intervention, you should sit down, you should actually let the team know what stage they're in, and you should have some really hard, hard conversations. And so the real lesson has always been for me to teach them that, that that's your work. You're, you've got a project to do, but your work is first working with your team, and start there. Um, but they don't really ever get it until they get it. <laughs> and so, you know, some lessons in life you, that you learn when you need to learn them. And so then I, I actually always give out my phone number to my students, and I get texts and phone calls um, both in the term and after at any time of day or night. And, um, and I'm glad to take them because that's where all of a sudden the lessons click. And so, you know, the affirming of uh, the email or the LinkedIn note from my student in Winnipeg uh, really made a difference to me, and I thanked him for that. I, you know, because some days when you walk in the room and they go, oh, here she is, you think, why do I do this work? And I know why I do the work. That's why I do it. Um, so project managers themselves really are focusing on the goals and um, at goals within a timeline. And that, you know, that's a, one of the things that um, you have to guide them or coach them through, that, yes, you've got that work to do, but you've got this other work running alongside. And... Um, not to be so output oriented. When you look at input tools and techniques and output and realize that their brain functions that way on this linear thing, to ask them to sit in the muck is quite difficult. They don't, they don't want to sit in the muck because they want to put it in a box and have an output to it. And, and the output means you're going to sit in the box for just a little while and hang in the pain. Um, you know, and, and they don't like to talk about pain either. So um, surely there's an action I can have here. <laughs> the action is just sit here. Um, 
and I've sat in a lot of icky conversations, and I hate icky conversations, but they think I like them. Um, but I just really need to model to them, like sit in an icky conversation and have your icky conversation, and where you get is where you get. And if you didn't get anything else done today, then you did the work you needed to do today. So the other thing is um, helping them appreciate what a high-functioning team is and how to get there and that relationship piece around um, what makes a team functioning. It's not measured by the output. Um, we want to measure performance on multiple levels, and um, which made me think back to you know Neil's statement around linking it to values. I do value exercises with the teams, and in my research, I did values exercises around identifying them at a competency-based level. And so, for the team, actually having them have descriptors around uh, what they're looking for from that interrelational place, as opposed to just the output of the work. And um, so they still need to have that skill development around, you know, stages of a team, around communication. And the other thing around what is good human resources practices, that they don't just think that it can be handed off to um, somebody who is an HR person. Uh, that each one of us carries an HR role. And uh, while I'm not an HR professional by any stretch of the imagination, I think we all have a duty to um, raise awareness of you know, those human, those human practices that we have in order to be effective in an organization. And my real desire in life is to align the human, um, the human processes against the strategy. That's my love. So um, really to me, I think of it, um, you know, that it is at a strategic level, but within a project, it's always going to be more at that tactical level. And so you're thinking more of the transition planning. Um, and so again, those clearly defined roles and responsibilities um, and doing good transition when, when you just pull that one out and you put that one back in. Um, really good transition planning. And, and um, I don't know how many times I've had conversations around every time you add someone new to a team, you're forming again. You gotta go right back. You gotta do that whole orientation. And so then I have conversations where, where they're saying, well, no, th the team is all performing but this person well what's a team and so you're none of you are performing so we're going to go back to this oh no that person just brought us down no this is what you know working in a team is and what team based work is and and really grasping that so spending the time helping them understand what a, how to get to high functioning and the importance of slowing down to speed up um, and while the actual um, Succession planning itself is at the um, the organizational level. Um, it's it's um, in organizations that run multiple projects. There there probably is something already. Certainly, if there is a a, um, a PMO, a project management office, there would be some succession planning in the project management office, and externally, a lot of project managers are supplied from other other contractors and so one would hope that it's done at that level and one would hope that at an organizational level that we have some sort of level of, of um, transition um, and orientation with the new project managers um, so I was left um, after thinking about this and actually I have to tell you during it, it I actually woke up this in the middle of the night thinking I have nothing to talk about <laughs> um, but what I really am left with thinking is that there really is an opportunity to do this better and I just got a new timetable for UBC's project management and I tried to push back some of the work and I'm thinking maybe there's an opportunity for me to talk about this more, you know, next year. I guess I'm going back now because I have something new to talk about. Um, so, you know, we can, there's opportunity to do it better. And, um, and so thank you, I guess, for asking me <laughs> about this question. <laughs>